broadcasting alive from the Green Room Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. It's the At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates, celebrating 25 years of home and garden wisdom. Without further ado, your hosts, Josh Carey and David Bates. We're getting the band back together, man. Thinking about it. Thinking about it? Yeah. Uh, this is a reference to a uh, post on the At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates' Facebook page. And uh, would we consider it a confirmation or a denial? We're not going to confirm it's or It's ambiguous, deny. I think, at this point. We've often been accused of being ambiguous. Go out and see it. Hey, we'll be right back. Okay, we're going to be right here. We're right here. By the way, <laughs> we're right who back. are you anyway? I'm Josh Carey. Hey, and I'm David Bates. Yes, you are. And uh, we've got Tyler Blankenship right there. He's pro- over there. Capable hands uh-huh. producing the program. I'm going to lose the shades. That was for the uh, purposes of effect. There are four and, lights. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, welcome in, everyone. We're going to talk about landscaping, uh, maybe a couple of home improvement things along the way. We've got Jake and Elwood. We've got viewer, uh, listener, depending on how you're streaming uh-huh. us, questions that have uh, been sent in in advance. So we will get to all of those uh, per usual this time of year. We have a slew of them. So I will not ramble excessively we'll mm-hmm. get right to the weather and today of course is saturday we're looking at party, partly cloudy conditions today mm. 82 for the high so it's going to be uh, pleasantly Glorious. warm we will have some showers in the overnight maybe a couple of tenths of an inch uh, t- in total mm. with uh, cloudy skies in the morning and uh, clearing in the afternoon uh, considerably cooler 64 for the high tomorrow so uh, mm. almost a 20 degree drop so it will be uh, noticeably different. Still quite pleasant yes. as we move through the week. Uh, we start to approach 70 on Monday. We get there Tuesday and up into uh, 80 degrees or low 80s by the mm-hmm. latter part of the week. Perhaps some rain again by the end of the week. And that's kind of a typical forecast for April. The showers are prevalent Currently, it's 48 degrees here uh, in the Music City, live from Bates Nursery Station. I will give you a quick oh, update no. on what our uh, statistics for our rainfall. We've had 17 inches here at Bates Nursery so far this year. Just three, trying to keep up with Fort Lauderdale, three, Florida. No, mm. gosh, three inches for the month, and uh, we had a quarter of an inch of rain yesterday. So wow. we did get a bit, and our thoughts definitely go out. You know, every, every time you think you have some kind of a – weather issue and how extreme it is you find out that oh no we didn't have that extreme nah. 26 inches of rain in seven hours i don't know how that's even possible <laughs> I, I don't, that's <laughs> mind-boggling um but we we definitely want to it's uh, flat down it's, there, it's flat there's nowhere for it to go yeah. and those scenes of parking garages where these tsunamis were rolling in was absolutely it's just amazing. But uh, anyway, uh, that's what that's all about. Thankfully, that's not happening here. And um, so we'll move on into the program. Nope. And we want to welcome in yes. our two capable uh, across the room hosts. <laughs> they, I, I, I want to make sure I, I, I want to use it. was almost at a loss for words. I was, going, I was trying to use an adjective that was uh, nice enough. Mm. Because they're both quite excellent. Caroline Gant, Austin Lowen, welcome in, guys. They look tired. We want, we want to say, <laughs> first of job. all, thank you to thank Carol, you. Caroline, who uh, always does our plants every week. Yes. So thank you for that, Caroline, for taking care of that. Austin is a guy who's, uh, he gets to talk a lot. It makes nursery. He's <laughs> uh, on Talk of the Town this week. He's a regular oh, on there. Yeah. WPLN and, as well. Yep. So um, Austin's uh no doubt got a lot to share with us. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good to be here. I've and done a lot it, of talking this week. We've been so land. Uh, this, mm-hmm. this week has been challenging for all of us. And, mm-hmm. and I think that's the, the word that we might um, extol to people is uh, patience. Because you won't say the bad word? Just say, no, we, <laughs> we, we ask your patience. We, know we're, we are uh, about 60 strong here, and it's not enough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and so that's that's as that's as good as we can do currently. And right. y- if you come out this weekend, you're not going to probably be able to have somebody walk around with you. We're going to answer questions. We're going to have to be able to float around and be able to work with uh, numerous people 
simultaneously. So uh-huh. bring your photographs. We'll, we're going to continue to make those suggestions. We're yep. going to help you the very best we can. Uh, this year, obviously, it is much more impacted than uh-huh. years past simply because there has been uh, this tremendous amount of death that has occurred due to uh, – the freeze that happened in this so it's very difficult to deal uh-huh. with before we get into that before you get in i that. want to speak briefly about the uh, event going on today it Sounds. will be going on today and tomorrow actually the colors of shelby and uh, this is a um, uh, benefit art show to benefit uh, shelby bottoms nature center that's the friends of shelby.org and uh, brought to you by the chestnut group and the Friends of Shelby and the Shelby Bottoms Nature Center. And this is a, a 150 works of art that are uh, wow. presented out there. They're pretty amazing. And uh, Is it all the plein air? That, like a, a, a Renee? It's or? all plein air. Oh, okay. The Chestnut Group is a plein air painting society. you so. got to go see this because this is a t- the techniques are spectacular. Uh, it's really excellent. And uh, speaking of Renee, there's one of her works right there. I don't know if I can blow it up kind of, bit. sort of a surrealistic. Yeah, yeah this is a, called the kissing tree because it's hard to tell from this photo. This, this, is, uh, this is mistletoe growing up in this dead tree right there. So that's why that's the kissing tree right uh, there. So I anyway, see. go out to... Uh, Shelby Bottoms Greenway to the Nature mm-hmm. Center today. That show is going on. I will tell you, there are fewer than 150 pieces left. There's, they have, wow. The sales have been quite good. Uh, many of the pieces that have been sold are still on display, so you it's really a worthwhile thing to get to do. But go out, support them today, and uh, see some incredible artists. It just blows me away every time I see uh, just it, ha- it, if you had an unlimited budget and lots of walls, you could you could really get some tremendous works of art. So. Well, I, I love it because it's kind of a cross between an impressionist type of a feel, there, but with more realism. Well, it's there, really, really cool. There is a fair amount of impressionistic approaches uh-huh. to that. It's, it's the whole gamut. So yeah. ch- you really need to check it out. Shelby Bottoms mm-hmm. Nature Center. Uh, out in Shelby Park, you know, if you see that photograph right it's there where the, the railroad bottom. trestle is, just keep driving until you see that and park in the lot right there beside of it and walk into the Nature Center. And that goes on uh, through tomorrow. So check that out, mm-hmm. the colors of Shelby. So without further ado, guys, let's just uh, kind of uh, get our heads going in the right direction. we got a day ahead of us, and we got a show ahead of us here. Uh, there's a, no shortage of questions this week per usual. What you got going on today? Let's do it. So we're going to go ahead and start with our post-freeze frenzy. We always get a lot of questions about the big freeze we had. So just kind of summarizing some of the stuff that was asked this week. uh, There are a lot of questions on cryptomeria, if they're bronze and they scratch green, and then what to replace basically boxwood, nandina, and laurel that have died. So... Take it away. <laughs> I, I'm going to say with Nandina, don't replace them. They're no. not dead. No, no, they're not. Do you agree on that, Austin? 100%. I, a bunch of them around town. The, you mentioned the talk of the town thing I did the other day. I did it at Merrill, uh, Merrill Rose's house, and uh, I looked at her and Nandina's. Every one of them are coming back. From the sticks, from the middle, from the bottom, they're coming back. So Do probably cut them halfway back, which is a pretty much safe call at this point. But yeah. but they're going to come back, and they're going to be nice. So don't replace your Nandinas. I mean, certainly you can afford to wait another month. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so that'll save you money. There's just no reason to do it. No, there's not. Nandinas are fine. Uh, laurels are coming back all over the place. Now, they are coming back from typically lower on the stem, so you're going to lose some of that height you know, and some of that width. And but just, not for long. But not for long. They're going to race up the stem. They're going to you know, just keep on growing. You're going to get a plant that's you know, good size before you know it. So, um, The unfortunate thing about those is that if you have a, a row of them, there could be one or two in there that are dead. Yeah. Yes. And that's the unfortunate part. If they were all killed back evenly, that's been part of the, and we were, talked about this a couple of weeks ago, the confounding nature of this whole event is its randomness. It doesn't, you know, I was telling Tyler before the show, there's a business I was in earlier this week that had boxwoods in containers. It's been there all winter, and they looked fine. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I dug up four, at, been at my house for 15 years that – 
did not survive. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a little bit of luck. I wasn't, I'm not going to wait three years for them to come out. So there's a lot of decisions like that to be made. Boxwoods, unfortunately, are one of those things that it takes them a while to grow well, out of. It literally could take them three years. Well, so. in, in the um, in the three seven one six seven, there's a certain person who had a beautiful stand of laurels in a, in a row. Um, you know what they look like. Mm -hmm. So instead of cutting them back, because you could see life all on them, ripped them out and then went and bought small ones. <laughs> so. Well. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> had those been left in place, they would they would overtake those small ones yeah. in much less time. So. Uh, well, and so folks, be patient. I mean, it was one of those. It was, a, know, it, was a, it was a desire, not a need. And I know everybody's tired of being patient, and you want to take action. But uh -huh. uh, the the photos that Caroline brought in last week of hers were a great example of what can happen. And uh, you may want to talk to that Austin about how those disadvantage those uh, disadvantageous buds can break out of that really woody stock and recover. Yeah, I've talked about it before. I mean, you can you can cut a, a you know a full size tree and leave yep. a stump up you know two or three feet, and you're going to see sucker sprouts come that from buds you never even knew existed. So I mean, and that's what happened to Caroline's as well is that she just saw a main trunk that just was just a woody trunk, but then you see green stems coming off of that. Out at, at Merrill's house, I saw the exact same thing. Um, but like you said, David, there was one of those her skip laurels in the row. And I'm talking these are old skip laurels. I'm talking stumps, like big wow. stumps. They're right. like seven, eight foot tall, like very big laurels. And there was one in the row that I could tell was struggling before, you know, this freeze ever happened. Right. It had a big you know, kind of dead hole in the main trunk. It was kind of like you could pull on it and it was kind of wiggly. It wasn't like really rooted into the earth. Um, and that one had no green or no signs of life at all. So, I mean, if they were stressed before the freeze event, uh, you might have to replace those. And I think she's going to have to replace that one. But all the rest of hers that were healthy and, you know, before the freeze, they were all pushing green back from the ground. So where was the one that died? In the middle of the road? It was in the middle right. left, It's always yeah. the case. It's always, yeah. yeah. And, and for people who are thinking about it, if you had that kind of situation and you can somehow manage to dig that one out, you could take one off the end yeah. and move it to the middle, and it will certainly be less noticeable that way. You yeah. might have to take one off both ends to make it balance. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and this seriously. one too, the one that I was pulling on, like I said, I could have probably, if I would have worked on it enough, I could have probably just pulled that out right. without even so it having obviously to get had a issues before. It had issues before. You right. could tell it was stressed. Yeah. It was half ugly. A lot of dead wood in there and a big hole in the main stem. And like I said, I could have probably pulled that thing out if huh. I wanted to. So that was, you know, that's part of it. But things are coming back. I think everything's for the most part. If you if you waited long enough, I think pretty much everything will come back. I'm still waiting on my boxwood, y'all. Well, I ain't giving up on them yet. Well, They're dead sticks is what uh -huh. they look like now. To anybody that came to my house, they'd be like, you're you're an idiot. You're keeping dead sticks alive. Well, but, and um, I've got some of the same issues at, at my house. I've got uh, a Himalayan sweet box, which you, we can't sell anymore, but but I've got them planted that a whole bed of them where – and they, they are kind of an herbaceous woody ornamental where they'll spread from – growth underneath and i've got just a few signs of green here and huh. there i'm going to leave them i'm really hoping they're going to come back because uh, you can't get them anymore for yeah. one thing and uh, they were gorgeous before so i'm going to give them at least another month to mm -hmm. see what they can do yeah well i hope they all come back y'all but they look dead right now. <laughs> if you're just going to look at them, you go, oh, they Those ain't going to make it. Well, you know, I don't know. Just like mm -hmm. Austin's Boxwoods. Mm. Oh, well, let's move on. Okay. Enough sad talk about freeze stuff. <laughs> How do I get my seven-year-old wisteria plant to bloom? Mm. Huh. Wisteria is funny because... It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny about... Oh, man. <laughs> voice crack. <laughs> Starting strong, hey, uh, Austin's the man in perpetual puberty. He is, his voice is <laughs> never stopped. <laughs> anyway, uh, wisteria is funny. It 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 if it has too much nitrogen in the soil, it will not bloom. Okay, it, that it's in like the pea family. Um, <laughs> it's a joke there, uh, and it 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 does. I don't know if you have excess nitrogen or not. There's a reason why though it's not blooming, and like I said, typically from what I've read in the past, is that it's an excess of nitrogen. Yeah, so, they, they get vegetative. Yes, big they time. Shoot green growth like crazy. 
uh, but they won't give you any bloom. So I'm assuming that's going to be the issue. We can try to fix this issue by giving it a higher middle number fertilizer um, in the early spring, probably before it ever even leafed out. Wisteria is just getting ready to leaf out if it hasn't started already. Um, so getting a hmm. middle number, a higher middle number fertilizer down in your soil will hopefully promote some yeah. blooms. Or my, maybe you can even find some triple superphosphate. Mm -hmm. That 0.460 might be a good way yeah, to go sure. to avoid putting any nitrogen in there at all. Yeah, you don't want to add any nitrogen. Because they're growing the machines area. anyway. They're growing machines. They don't, don't need to yeah. be encouraged. We no. had one at our home, that our uh, the first home that we lived at, that I planted the day we moved in. Uh, we lived in that house 11 years. When I sold it and we moved to the Smyrna, the first spring that it ever bloomed was the last year that we were in the house. Oh, it hated 11 you. years <laughs> old. That one wasn't a funny one. No, it was not it funny. It was a spiteful one. Oh, that was the one that ran all over the yard. Uh, yeah. Made, 30 feet away, uh, you'd uh, have one show up. Well, I still have them coming up in between where these boxwoods were taken out. Now I'm <laughs> there. You know, these were removed 14 years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we continued to work at them. So, wisteria. Yeah. It's a. It's like kudzu in North Carolina too. I it, mean, it, it, it takes over stuff. And it, go up to the, go up to the hill in Jolton up here next to Tony's Food Land and look in the woods right there. It's taken over the woods. It's about to creep into Tony's. Yep. Uh oh! But it look out, Tony's. So good. <laughs> There's no better smell on the planet. Than it does it. smell good. And when they're in bloom, the ones in the woods up there where I was talking about, when they're in bloom, it's like this cascading purple, beautiful woods um, it, it scene. It's fantastic. Mm. But we'll hitters. get a picture of it when it's blooming. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. And we'll put it up. Okay. Hey, All real right. quick, Margaret uh, uh, picked up her um, freeze protection bag. Yay! Hey, hey, Margaret, she, awesome. And she Won says that a that couple of weeks ago. Yeah, uh, it says Miss Moniki, her Japanese maple, will love it. Oh, well, yeah. See, there's a true at home listener who That's names right. her plants. Much okay. like you. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, she doesn't have to use that frost thing anymore. No. Yes. Hopefully, we're done. I don't know. Hopefully. So speaking of Japanese maple and frost, we've got a Japanese maple question pertaining to the last freeze we had. I have a Japanese maple which has suffered from the freeze we had earlier. Some of it has been cut back and some of it hasn't. Is it possible for this tree to flourish again? I sure <laughs> hope so. I've got the same thing going at my house. I do too. I'm going to have to cut some branches off of one of my small ones. But I'd say about half of it is flushing out and looks really, really good. It's going to be a weird... Um, prune on it it's going to be a little bit uneven for a while but yeah. i have hope for mine yeah yeah i mean it, just because it's not picture perfect doesn't mean that the plant is is dead you know what i mean i mean if it looks you know odd to you that doesn't necessarily mean if it's got leaves and growth i mean the plant is alive um and it's going to be fine but yeah aesthetically is it going to look just picture perfect for you? Maybe not. I've got one as well. Weeping uh, Ryus in Japanese maple, a mm. green leaf, and it got whacked by the freeze or frost, I guess, and a lot of its tips got damaged, and it's already leafing way back out, and it's got a little chunk on the side that's a little off. I'm going to have to prune out of there, but it's plenty alive and ready yeah. to go. So yeah, what, I mean, and what most people uh, may erroneously uh, assume is that the freeze damage was a result of the cold weather that we had before Christmas. And that was mm -hmm. not the issue with them. They, they are very much susceptible to uh, hard freeze after they've started juicing up and the sap rises in them and the cells become engorged with the sap, and, which freeze, and those expand and these ice crystals puncture the cell walls and then you have, uh, you have death that results as um, that activity so prune that dead out now what if what on the on the living leaves would a foliar feed with something like monies or super thrive help or hurt or hinder or be a waste of time uh, i mean i don't, I don't think it's gonna help much he's not gonna hurt he's not gonna hurt okay. anything okay. no i mean i do know though i've i've read a number of articles about japanese maple specifically and if you over fertilize a japanese maple uh, with a high nitrogen fertilizer you'll get a lot of growth yeah that's fine but it, it, it supposedly it doesn't do well for fall colors. Fall hmm. colors not as vivid if you have an excess of nitrogen in your soil. So be careful with the nitrogen, especially the synthetics. Whenever you get you know real high numbers on that, you can yeah you can see growth. But other things can happen because of that. I know I was telling Caroline this story about a woman I used to know that was an avid gardener, and she was growing a tomato plant, and she was growing it in a large pot. 
And it was literally probably the biggest, tallest tomato plant I've ever seen in my life. There was this old school Polaroid picture of her standing next to it. This is like back in the 80s. And I saw this tomato plant. It had gone above the greenhouse and started climb, started climbing even higher. I mean, this was probably, I'm not even joking, like a 20, 25-foot tomato. Holy moly. And she told me that she got one single tomato off of that plant. And I said, oh, yeah, well, what'd you do? And she said, well, you know, I think what my problem was, I put that blue water to it every time I watered it. I said, oh. So it's a high nitrogen, like a 16% nitrogen solution or something, or even 20% right. every single time she watered. And what did she get? Yeah, big, beautiful 25-foot tomato plant. It grew exactly <laughs> like grew a exactly weed. grew exactly like a weed, and then no flowers or bloom, you know, no blooms or fruit after that at all. That's because it's too much mm. nitrogen. It's not going to produce those blooms for you. So it puts its energy into the leaves. So be careful with the nitrogen. Huh. There you go. Mm-hmm. Good story. What you got? <laughs> oh, hello. Hey, hey, I tell you, before you before you go, Carol. Before, before you go, what are we just? You were waiting on me, and I, I was, was looking over at you. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, let's talk for just a moment. Speaking of uh, proper balance of nutrition mm-hmm. for things you're trying to grow, uh, if you use Earthmix garden products, you're going to get that when you purchase the products and when you plant things in them. Yes. Uh, Earthmix garden products are are not sold as fertilizers, but they are highly fertile soils naturally because uh, the uh, all the uh, different mixes, the compost and all have uh, extra endo and ectomycorrhiza fungi yeah, uh-huh. added into them, humic acid. Yep. And when you use that in conjunction with things like earthworm castings, mm. mushroom compost, oh. Uh, product is sustain, which is uh, which is a coconut core. Yep. So these are products that are a premium type of organic inputs that add vitality and don't give you problems. You're going to get optimal growth, and you're going to be able to get a re- mm-hmm. uh, return on your investment, either in fruit or in flower or in just growth. So check out all the great mm-hmm. line of Earthmix products. Earthmix Garden is a naturally a big seller this time of year because a lot of people are putting in what, Josh? Garden. That's exactly right. Now, if you're going to do uh, landscaping, uh-huh. you might consider getting some earth mix. Landscape. Landscape is a really good product. Uh-huh. And, of course, if you've, got, if you've done planting in the past and you just want to supercharge the soil you already have, what mm-hmm. would they use for that, Josh? Uh, oh, my goodness. Supernatural. Supernatural. Super, I gave you the key word. Yeah. Supernatural. Yeah. So no matter which earth mix product you buy, you can be assured you're getting the highest quality and it's going to give you productive results that uh, we've are, got proof in the studio yeah, here that, that are, it works that are frankly astounding. So anyway, check it check it out earthmix.net. Go to uh-huh. find earthmix tab on earthmix.net. Click on the find earthmix tab, and there you will see a uh-huh. list of probably uh, close to forty different locations, and you can zoom in dozens to dozens. Uh, uh, the location nearest you, or you can put in directions on mm-hmm. the search bar here, and it'll give you turn by turn to the location nearest you. Remember this, success in gardening begins at the ground level. You use Earthmix garden products, and we uh, uh-huh. I encourage you to patronize those uh, sellers of the product and uh, give you the best in gardening uh, results now so, and Austin if you get if you could reach down I know you put your birthday present down beside you if you could reach down yeah. there and, and get a hold of what it is there's proof positive that I'm that it, what we've talked about with Earthmix garden products oh. is the absolute truth these wow. are my babies that we started way back in uh, oh I started them in end of February and nice. uh, we've got some basil. I and see that. Some Looking cucumbers good, And we've got some dill. It's got a little leggy because I don't have a heat pad, but plenty of light. That is my custom secret mix of sustain and proganic eye wow. is what I started wow. all this season. So you, 50-50 You, you even lightened it further. Yeah. So, okay, well, very good job, Josh. Well, wow. Nice. And there's enough to share, but that's part of his birthday present. So Thank you. You're welcome. He, part of it won't make up for his boxwoods, but no. it'll, yes, they're more coming. <laughs> he can put the basil where the boxwoods. It'll went. distract yeah, him for mean, a little bit. No. The boxwoods are coming back. I got. I, I believe you. Maybe. I believe you. <sighs> No, they're coming back. Uh, I sent Tyler a picture. We had talked about it last week after uh-huh. we talked about Earth Mix. So it's kind of hard to see, but this is the bed that I filled with garden in the fall. And I planted most of this, the big stuff, I would say in October. And it wow. actually grew through the winter. So Ooh, there's um, Russian sage, pincushion flower, uh-huh. 
French sorrel, and then there's salvia behind it, which you can't really see. But that little small one, which is interesting, Tyler, scroll scroll out. So do you see that tiny little plant right at the, at the bottom? Right at the bottom. The so dandelion? that's also a pincushion flower that oh. I planted at the same time as that big one, and only one grew through the winter. Weird. Now, what's see, the one with the purple flower? Not the uh, the stocky one, but the one with the it almost right looks in like front? A, yeah. Pincushion flower. Pincushion mm-hmm. flower. Yeah, that plant tripled in size over the winter. Almost looks like chives with the bloom there. I love it. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, so that's Earth Mix Garden right there. Everything is doing fantastic. I didn't get the whole bed, but there's a lot of stuff on the other side. Well, so, there you yeah. go. There it is, and, y'all. and the great thing about it is it's ready to use. You open yep. the bag, dump it in, and don't do anything else. Just plant. Mm-hmm. Just plant, plant water. and go. You can plant in the bag. <laughs> well, you could if you're... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Randall Lance did that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes, yes, he did. You can grow a tomato plant, just drop the bag down nice and flat, you know? Drop a tomato right in the middle of it. That's exactly what he did. Well, I, and if you want to promote the brand, you do it with the bag, with the face up. And yeah, if you yeah, just absolutely. want green, you just put it face down, and then you just have a green bag. So. We should do that. We should do that here. Okay. But let's do it. Let's we, line the we, parking we lot We have the that. technology. I believe we can scratch up an extra bag or I two. I think we can do that. All right, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And All let's right. make some more questions happen okay, while okay. we're at it. All right, let's talk fig trees, y'all. All right. <gasps> I bought fig trees last year, and they're not blooming yet. I'm assuming... <laughs> Leafy Leafy. yet. The branches are dried out. What did I do wrong? Nothing. That's exactly what mine's doing right now as well. It is early. It is early. It's very early for figs. They're coming back from the base, y'all. They're not coming back from those stems. Give Mm -hmm. up on those stems. It's done for this year. Last year, got them. That freeze really, you know, killed back all the old wood. And we're going to get new wood from the base. So not your fault at all. This was Mother Nature's issue this year. Um, so just, but still be patient, y'all. I, I, I stopped at a buddy's house of mine last night. Who's, uh, just started growing, uh, plants last year. He got the bug and now he is like hooked. So I go over and I help him every once in a while. He's on my way home. So I'll go over and help him with some things. And he's like, man, I'm getting ready to dig up this fig. I just can't even do it. It's dead. I know it's dead. And I'm like, no, man, just wait it out. Wait. Like they're coming back from the roots. You know, strangely enough, and here's another, another factor in the randomness of all this. I've got this huge it's called a King Arthur fig. And a friend of mine, this this mm-hmm. is a, a, a cultivar that was isolated in North Georgia. So, uh, but it's a, it's a wonderful plant. And it got killed back to the ground this year. And the only place that new growth is showing up is on the, on the one stem that is furthest away from the structure. Now, you would think it would be <laughs> just the opposite because yeah. you get some heat that and it comes from the other side, but that's not the case of mine. So we got it cut back this week, and one little shoot down there, so it's coming back. Uh, but I don't know if there'll be others come out of the rest of those or not. So just you know, you got to be patient with them. I almost twice, as I have said in previous weeks, have um, almost twice, almost twice, so cut is it that down once. That was well, no, it's almost twice. Oh, yeah, okay. so there was two times <laughs> I almost did it. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> almost twice. Almost twice. That's one. I guess it could be as easily almost 10 times. It could have been three. It could be yeah. a lot, y'all. Yeah. It was almost so twice. So many it numbers was, out yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's talk about hydrangea. Okay. okay. Wow. Little quick fire hydrangeas barely bloom the past two years. Too little sun. Should I move them? If it's getting too little sun, then probably so. Yeah. I mean, they don't give you the flower power that you would want if you don't have them in a sunny location. That's a panicle style hydrangea, and they prefer sun at least for six hours a day, four to six at least. Um, and that'll give you the best bloom. So that's probably your issue if they're getting a little bit too much shade. So, yeah, if you want to move it, you can certainly do it. I would have already told you to do it over the wintertime whenever it was dormant, but. You can do it now. Just be be quick. Like David always talks about, have your have your hole already ready and dug where you want to move it and move it quickly, pack it back in nice and tight, and then water it very well. Mm-hmm. I had a young man who uh, sent messaged me yesterday about some little sapling trees that he transplanted, mm-hmm. in the, and he was not – expeditious with all of them and he's seeing about half of them Dying. showing significant damage because you know you can't overemphasize the how quickly to get them in the ground it needs to happen fast so get that hole dug first and your soil prepared then dig the other one immediately move it in there backfill it tamp it water it thoroughly i mean try to drown it to get mm-hmm. all the air pockets out and it'll probably be just fine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you let it sit out there for 30 minutes in the sun <laughs> 
30 Man, minutes. No good. 30 minutes. I lost no a time bunch of them one year where I went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's no if it, I, had, I had laid them out in a row where I, I was wanting to We're poop. not going to go down the path of how long you were in there, but it could be that <laughs> if they were bare-rooted plants, it was number one. Well, yeah. you know. Old age, Josh. What can I say? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this was back when I was a young stud. Oh, okay, okay. Well, still, you made a mistake. You went to yes. the bathroom and you killed your plants, Josh. The trees were free, so you gotta know, no there when you to go. hold it. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, our next was question. The front yard, no so I get yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, comes from Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Good Miriam. morning. Hi. It's about her knockout roses, which mine are pretty much toast. There's still not much happening. My knockouts are mostly brown, and I'm ready to yank. What's a good <laughs> replacement shrub rose? Well, hmm. I got to say, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam. <clears throat> there is there is not another rose that's as good as the knockout rose when it comes to growth and the amount of blooms that you get. I mm -hmm. mean, it truly is probably... The biggest and best rose on the market. Now, do they come with their issues? Yes, yeah, sometimes they do, but it's a rose. I mean, all roses come with issues. So if you wanted to do more of a shrub rose, though, that, that stays a little smaller than the knockout, you can go with the, the Drift series. Which They're is wonderful. A, I love them. Really good I little love, rose. Yes. They're nice. They're tight. They stay you know, close to the ground-ish. They're like a and, little And then bounds also. They do. Yeah, they're a, if a, you could call a rose tidy, that would be the one that stays a little bit yeah. tidy. Nice and tight. Uh, blooms like crazy. Yeah. Glossy foliage. It's pretty good That's about the black I spot. I like about them. Uh -huh. yeah, they're gorgeous green on the leaves. It's they just, are. Uh, it's glossy. Very, very shiny leaf. It, they're, they're an attractive plant, and they come in a multitude of colors now. Um, so And they seem to, to bloom pretty well, even if they're not in full sun. Uh, we've got some. Renee uh -huh. planted some in a bed that's near the sidewalk. It does get... A few hours, but it doesn't get anything like all day. It's in shade or mottled sunlight, and it, they bloom really nicely. So uh -huh. that's another uh, benefit of them. Yeah. Speaking of roses, well, Speaking I got you. Uh-oh. Mm. Okay. Next it's a, week. It's a big week. Big week for me. Me and Pedro specifically. Me and Pedro deal with the roses when they come in. We sort them. They come in all just whatever, not like true to, you know, not similar with similar. We have to go through them. It takes us forever. We're, by the end of the day, we're bloody. On our legs, on our arms, we're moving roses all day, but it's our favorite day of the year. You know, we need to we need to get Brent Furby to come in here and help sort them. Yeah. And then he can more – I think he's going to try to come in next weekend, and Brent is our, our sales rep that uh, we buy these through. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a very much uh, like you, Austin. He's, a, he's excitable about roses. He mm -hmm. really wants to talk about them. So mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get Brent in here next weekend uh, because the roses are, are – uh, uh, they're going to be happening, and uh, people are going to be grabbing them, I suspect. Oh, we're gonna, they're mm. going to be right at the front door. I mean, just like candy bars for y'all to grab. Right <laughs> Except right they'll there. bite back a little bit if you're not careful. Yeah, so yeah, be careful. Candy when you bars grab them. with thorns. Uh huh. So, real quick, while we're on it, let me talk about my roses. I've got a little patch of roses on the side of my bed. I planted them, all these hybrid teas, beautiful roses. They were great, everything, whatever. Not great anymore. Every single one of them has died on top. Their sticks have died back, but they came back from their root stock. Mm -hmm. So, if y'all are unfamiliar with grafting, all roses are grafted onto a root stock of a really hardy root stock. Okay? Every one of mine came back from that root stock. And my rose bed looks pretty good right now, actually. Uh, but they're not true to type. They're going to be, I think they're just going to be this kind of... Floribundus? I'm not even sure what it's going to be yet. I haven't seen it, but... Like Rosa Rugosa, did, maybe, or <laughs> something? Maybe. They're not as thorny as that, so I don't think they're going to be that one. Um, but... They have produced flower buds, so they have got buds on them right now, so they will be in full bloom before you know it. I'm going to bring in some pictures so y'all can see it, and I've, I've been going through my brain. Do I want to get rid of them? Do I want to do something different? I've gotten opinions from all of my coworkers on what they thought maybe I could plant back there. Give me some ideas, whatever. Either Not way, me. I'm leaving the roses. I'm going to see what they bloom. If they're pretty enough, then they're staying. If but they're not you, getting you, jerked out. And you do know one thing, that with near certainty, whatever that understock is that they're grafted on it will be a single flowering. It will not flower a repeat blooming. Probably not, exactly. So you'll get, you'll get perhaps one nice show. One show, yeah. maybe uh -huh. two. So, if you I'm know, lucky. the only thing you might consider is if you have a, a two or three roses that you really like that you see come in, you might not plant them yet, but just kind of get them home and um, safely. Hey, uh, also, too, grow roses in pots, y'all. 
I'm yep. telling you, grozes mm-hmm. and pots up off grozes. the ground. Grozes. You said grozes. grozes. You grows them. <laughs> you grows them <laughs> in pots. Grozes All right. and pots. He's talked you... a lot this week. Give him a break. Oh, He's a... boy. <laughs> yeah. So get you a nice fancy pot and grow them on your patio. I'm telling y'all, roses are, uh, they can be a lot better in pots. You keep them off the ground, our fungusy soil that we have here, all uh-huh. the bugs that we've got. Get them off of that and raised up a little bit. And yes, you're certainly going to have to water them more than you would in the ground. But you can keep a rose cleaner if you keep it away from that soil a little bit better. So there you go. There's a little tip. There it on is. Roses. There you go. All, all right. right. Josh has a photo, I believe. Yes, from our uh, longtime listener, viewer, Greg Villaflor. I sent it over to you guys to identify yeah. it. Um, what's the note? I need to prune it back pretty heavy. Can this like be done a, this uh, time of the year? It's like is. a Heller's Japanese, or is that a Stokes Dwarf that's, Vomitorium? That's Alex Vomitorium. Vomitorium. Yeah. Yeah. Vomitorium. Yeah, let's talk yeah. a bit about the origin of that word. Uh, back in the day, uh, Native Americans would use eating the leaves of that if they were stomach was not feeling right, epicac. it will it will ca- it's epicac on uh-huh. the root. Right, it will cause you to throw up. So uh, don't eat hence, it, Greg. Hence the name Ilex vomitoria. It is derived from a native um, Ilex vomitoria, but this is a Stokes dwarf, probably. Austin, what do you think? Yeah, it, it could just be a straight species. I mean, it could just be the. The native, you know, we decided to move. Joy uh, it has a whole native section back now, and we decided to keep the Ilex vomitoria, the the Yopon holly, is right. a common name for this. Uh, we keep it in our native section now because it is actually a native around here. Not sure, like exactly Middle Tennessee, but I guess around Tennessee area. Well, Greg um, is probably native. what zone eight, nine. Uh, in he, he's in Corinth, Mississippi. He he might be zone eight, but uh, he, he's uh, he's probably he's probably. 7A or 8B. Okay. But you can cut that tree, right? Or 7B or 8A, <laughs> Prune, I should yeah, say. Prune. I got, yeah, it, I I got mean, it backwards. Typically, you know, roughly around that February time before it flushes in the spring, let's get it balled back up is what I like to say. Just kind of tighten down so it, you know, flushes nice and uniform. That's kind of what we're going for. So it's not leggy and sporadic or whatever. So. And I have seen these freeze back several times mm-hmm. uh, over the many years that I've gotten to do what I do for a living and – they will recover. You just got to give them a little time. So yeah. if, if that's the case, just be patient. They will come back. They so will. trim it up, Greg. Just cool. FYI, that was right. my third plant I ever identified in college in my identification class. Number and who, three. Wow. And who knew? <laughs> who knew? This is where I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> you did doing we're, it again. We're glad you be here. Yes, well, me too. <laughs> I'm glad uh, to be here. That hey, was the right. third. Horton on YouTube commenting or question, what should I be feeding my early December planted onion plants? Yes, they made it through the Christmas flash freeze. A balanced organic or just nitrogen? Uh, probably not so much nitrogen. It's more of like a, a bone meal type. Yeah, it's, it's more a, it's that middle tuberous, number. It's yeah. a tuberous plant. You know, that's what like they're a, all about. A bulb tone is a common product mm-hmm. we sell here that you'd probably want to use. You don't want to go supernatural perhaps to it. Uh-huh. You know, some kind of an or, or just an organic type plant tone, something something yeah. that is uh, it's going to be even all the organics, even though the numbers may not uh, differentiate all that much, you're, mm-hmm. not, you're never going to have ammoniacal nitrogen. That's ammonium nitrate in an organic fertilizer therefore it does not flash the uh, nitrogen out like it would on a uh, chemical type fertilizer so you can uh, you get that nitrogen and it releases very slowly just like the other components so you won't get that big flush of growth that is maybe not totally good for the plant yeah and also just I mean, if your onions look pretty green and good I mean they're probably uh, you know onions don't need a lot of a lot of attention um Speaking of onions, my alliums, y'all, my millennium huh. alliums are just gorgeous. If you're not growing this plant, you need to. They're so pretty. Mm. Yeah. They're all say the same. Nothing to that. I've said the same about my chives. <laughs> how, how, chives, chives. Same thing. Pretty. They're so boring. How They're tall so reliable do those allium, beautiful. How tall do those alliums grow? A uh, foot and a half yeah. at the topmost bloom, pretty much. It's the very front border of my and, whole bed. And each bloom is about how large in diameter. Uh, I'll give you about that. Yeah, like golf ball size. Golf ball size, yeah. 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 But, man, they flower. Oh. And there are, like, allium giganteums that get really much big. Bigger. Yes, Much I bigger, mean, yeah. They're like a... Uh, like a uh, like, like a kid's 
basketball or something. They, they could, I don't <laughs> uh-huh. know. You're not joking. Ben Trust grew them for yeah. a while at his old house, uh-huh. and he would bring them in when they would flower, and it was amazing. Yeah. But while we're on a topic of fertilizing and feeding, one uh-huh. of our viewers asks, favorite boxwood fertilizer? Huh. Take it, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's fun. I've never fertilized my boxwoods, but if you wanted to, um, they... You know, this is a different scenario, okay? These boxwoods we grow for green growth, and that's really about it. We're not trying to get fruit. We're not trying to get flowers on boxwoods. So what are we going for? We're going for that green, deep green growth and a lot of it if we can. Now, boxwoods don't flush. You know, they don't grow very fast, so you don't get a ton of growth each year. But if this is a different scenario to where you would want to go with a higher first number fertilizer to get that green growth in there and to keep them healthy. So anything with a, you know nitrogen, the very first number, the nitrogen levels that are up a little bit higher, go with that. Um, it doesn't really matter what matter what the label says so much. Just look at those three numbers on the back and get a you know a nitrogen content of at least say ten percent at the mm. lowest. Um, and then you can go up from there if you need to. So that's what I'd recommend. It looks like we've offended somebody. Oh no. Uh oh. Okay, it gave us a. Stink well, face. Did we get an angry reaction? We got a stink face. Well, Sorry, Kay. Well, we try to give accurate information. It's not always what good you want to hear. No, it's not always what you want to hear. And you know that's. But you know we are uh, we're here every day, so we yeah. can live better with the truth, even if it's not especially wonderful so hopefully uh, hopefully it gives you information you need even though you might not want it let me talk for just a moment about uh-huh. where we are at Bates Nursery and Garden Center and and again we're probably uh, going to have to share with you some news that might not be wonderful about some of your plants yeah. and we try to encourage everyone to give them time to recover so we're not out here trying to sell you plants that you don't need. Mm-hmm. We're only interested in trying to help you where your needs are. And if you can wait and get them to come back, at, it's certainly a better situation for you. And it just makes us feel that much better about it because we want you to have success. Unfortunately, weather has other plans from time to time. And while we didn't get something as devastating as a Fort Lauderdale flood. 27 um, inches of rain. We did have hours. significant weather over the winter and then a late freeze in the spring and even though our meteorological winter was mild horticulturally it was pretty severe so a lot of people are dealing with the effects of that uh, almost everybody on some level so uh, when you when you come out bring photographs of the areas that you're working on the plants that you have concerns about we need close-ups if we're going to make any yes. determination like down the base stem if we're going to be able to help you determine right now, but still with many things, you should wait at least a few more weeks. I know everyone is really tired of waiting, but if you can, it may really save you substantially because many things will still come back. In the event you decide you don't want to wait or they simply aren't coming back, we have a lot to choose from here at Bates Nursery and Garden Center. More, more than just the selection of plants, which is absolutely vast. We probably have, I would guess, about 20 semis a week that are rolling through here that we're unloading. And it's uh, no small feat to keep up with that. And so we really track heavily on our inventory. Uh, matter of fact, you can check it daily on our website, BatesNursery.com. Click mm-hmm. on the search tab up here or go to specific categories, and it'll tell you what is in each one. Now, you can order all the things we sell online. Now, we'll uh, put this word out to everyone right now. If you're ordering plants f- to be delivered, you're going to have to be patient yep. because we're, we're backed up three weeks right now. Um, so I strongly suggest... You're going to come out and get things or you're going to order them online be prepared to come and pick those plants up and haul them yourself we are uh, we are at capacity and beyond and we are scrambling trying to figure out how we can possibly get more deliveries done but if you want to get your plants right now come ready to uh, uh, to get those you will be amazed how much we can get in your car you may not think <laughs> We're, we're, we're trying to, I think, you know, the Amazon effect has hit a lot of folks where the delivery just you want to click and deliver, and that's great. Except you can't that, do same day, David? No, no. Only we can, order we can, within the we next can load, 37 seconds? We can load it in your vehicle the yes. same day, though. So that's how you get same day delivery is yeah. Yeah. get it yourself. Seven, so. seven eight-foot trees, no problem. We'll get it in your SUV Abs- or, or 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So come out and see us. Bring photos of Uh the areas you're working on. If you know you're going to be replacing a bunch of plants, count how many were in there before. That'll give us a lot of help on trying to figure out Uh uh, what you're trying to replace and how many you're going to need. And that'll help speed up our ability to help you get your things done so you can get your shopping out of the way and get home and get Mm -hmm. on with the gardening part. Don't forget your earth mix. You've got a complete line of earth mix products, both in bag and in bulk. So if you have a truck or trailer, we can load those items uh, in in bulk directly onto your vehicle. And then put the plants right on top of that. We can do that. Yes, Yes, we can. So come on out. Uh, With regard to perennials and annuals, this little shot on the screen here is in the perennial area. We are maxed. We got full Stop. amount, but people are buying like crazy. We actually have 25 racks coming in in the morning. Oh. So if you happen to not see what you're looking for today, it's possible. We got a bunch more coming tomorrow. So we're, you know, this they got time, They got low biscuses today. Uh, no, we can actually have high biscuits, Josh. Oh, really? Yeah, these Those are not are very tall. You know, these are high biscuits, yes. Oh, okay. So no matter what you're looking for, uh, chances are we either have it exactly or we have a really viable alternative to recommend. Come out and see us, Bates Nursery and Garden Center. We're conveniently located one mile north, Bridley Parkway at exit. 19 on White's, um, at White's Creek Pike, just a mile north or nine-tenths, as Josh says, uh-huh. of uh, Briley Parkway About on the click. left. And uh, when you pull in, you know, look for parking. If you're pulling a trailer when you come in, do not park in any uh, either the gravel lot ahead or in the paved area. Pull straight on down to where the bulk material bins are, and you'll be instructed on where to park once you get down that way. Uh-huh. It's really tight conditions right now. We're doing everything we can to make it a great experience for everyone who Pay takes attention. the time, is considerate enough to do business with us. We really do appreciate that. But we're running at absolute capacity. So we guys, do appreciate. Just slow down. You guys are better than most on your worst day. So just, just ease yeah. up and, yeah, this, and it'll be okay. Yeah, we're going to get through it. Yeah. Uh, one, a couple of things quickly, and I'm, then we'll close here. Uh-huh. You know, I do a weekly blog, yep. and that comes out uh, in the. Um, in your email, in your inbox at 3.50 uh, every Thursday afternoon. Thursday. And uh, did, I just say, did I say Thursday? Thursday. Thursday, okay. You, you said it that. too. Okay. I said it also. You can just scroll down the page right down the next section there. You can put your email address mm-hmm. and your name right here and click that you want to receive it, and you yep. will receive it. Or you can go to the website here and click on new blog post, which is right there. And the season of awakening is what you see right there. And as apparently Look at we those have nice new benches, we have awakened in the greenhouse area. Joy Bovin and staff down in the greenhouse perennial area. They they did an incredible job this winter of redoing all of that. Wow. You got to come see to really appreciate uh, and the selection and the uh, hopefully ease of shopping here at Bates Nursery and Garden uh-huh. Center. And I'm going to. Shut up now because okay. I've talked enough. I interrupt Beautifying you, Nashville no. since 1932. That's 91 years. Bates Nursery and Garden Center. So thank you for letting me ramble for just a moment. I'll say that was a great Mark Twain quote you included on your blog this week. I very much enjoyed that blip about spring fever. Yes, it is. <laughs> so if you, if you want to see that quote, yeah, go to the go to the website uh-huh. or go back to your inbox. Maybe you didn't read it, but it's the second go little back, paragraph. Yeah, go there. back and read last week's yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, there's, They're there's all a, good. I, I hide a lot of information in there, yes. and you know we, um, as well as pertinent links, according uh, 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 including one to this program and how you get questions into yep. us. Speaking of those questions. Let's get back to them. All right. Before the questions, though, there's a lot of stuff happening around town. Oh. Uh A lot of stuff turning (laughs) colors. Somebody's going to push a button. A lot of of things that look pretty. Somebody's going to. I'm just wondering (laughs) what they are. (laughs) With Austin. I I, I only had to say twice. Somebody's going to push a button. Uh (laughs) All right. You're right. There's a lot of stuff in bloom. A lot of cool (laughs) stuff right now, too. We're all, hey, we're all pretty. Pretty Shell toasted. Shocked, we're folks. toasted just a little bit, folks. It's just yeah. the way it is. We're 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 really doing our best. <laughs> All right. So what's blooming? There's a lot of stuff blooming. Okay. So the white and pink dogwoods, for sure, you're seeing those still lit up like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple that you don't think about so much until they bloom is going to be our eastern snowball viburnum and our Chinese snowball viburnum. 
If you're not growing Chinese snowball, y'all, you need to. Big, huge white blooms that are fantastic. Uh, really, really easy, big. Easy, easy to grow. Easy too. to grow. Those are definitely lighting up right now. The eastern snowballs are still kind of green right now. They're not fully open. They will be within the next week. Uh, so you're starting to see those. Crab apples still holding on a little bit. And it's been a great year for just apple trees in general. Yep. It's been it's nice and cold this year for those apples to get those chill hours. And they are blooming like crazy. I got a good feeling we're going to have a nice apple crop this year mm -hmm. um, a couple also you don't really think about very much these are some natives around here the red buckeye and the bottle brush buckeye ask saw, us and you will receive that's right and i saw one on the side of the interstate yesterday that's a whole cultural joke <laughs> 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 yes. oh really yes yeah. yeah. ask right. us pava flora or or uh -huh. uh, or uh, pavia pavia yes <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, on the side of the interstate the other day, I saw a bottle brush buckeye just randomly out there just kind of growing by itself. They're great. It, we have some red buckeyes here, some pretty big ones, too. If you're not growing a red buckeye, I think you ought to. It's a huh. cool plant. I've got one in the yard full show right now. So looking really good. Your azaleas are blooming right now. Well, they're either dead or, or they're, they're blooming. blooming. <laughs> <laughs> so some of them didn't fare very well, but a lot of them are blooming. They're blooming a little uh, sporadic this year, so they've got little chunks of blooms on stems and not the greatest year for azaleas because they certainly took a hit over this winter time. But some of them are lit up. I got some white ones right now on the side of my house, just full show. Didn't take a hit at all. So there's some more yeah. randomness. Um, I know that uh, Caroline has some Dicentra bleeding heart that is in bloom <laughs> yes, I right do. now. So And also Columbine. Columbine's a little perennial, blooming right now. They look great. So there you go. That's what's blooming. Beautiful. All right. Wow. Let it go. All right, let's talk about something that doesn't really bloom. Evergreen shrub or tree that can limb up a corner of a house looking to stay eight feet wide and 12 feet high. Okay. Limb, when they say limb up, Austin, do you think they're talking about actually limbing the tree up? or yeah, they are. I, I guess, yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, any almost any upright conifer you could do that with. Yeah. It's, it's, it has all to do with how close you plant it as to whether you should you maybe should or not i don't know yeah i know that's a that's a tricky one there is a um you know most of the conifers y'all are going to get bigger than 12 feet that's kind of the problem um there is a new holly out there called the emerald colonnade holly um literally its specs on the tag are exactly 12 feet tall and eight feet wide um now do we always trust tags to you know at a mature size say a plant's 20 years old is it going to stop at 12 feet tall and eight feet wide i doubt it but hollies can be trimmed um easily it's to the maintain. very first really good upright japanese holly that's yeah. ever been developed there uh. all the rest of them prior to that have not been good at all but this one is a excellent holly but as a tree form I think we've had some in a tree form, have we not? Austin? Maybe they're they're rare to usually to they limb are up. grown as a full pyramidal plant. Yes. So, you know, yeah. as far as limbing up goes, I don't know that that would be your choice unless you got one that was already grown with that intent. Yeah. So. Mm. Okay. So <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> so, one of our listeners needs some ideas. Shrubs along a narrow driveway space between the drive and a retaining wall, and then they send a green heart. Oh, so good Ooh. morning. So a narrow space between a driveway and a retaining wall. Festigate. That's here. the word you need to know. Don't you cuss mm -hmm. on the at home show. I'm going with switchgrass here, y'all. <gasps> oh, oh, man. oh, I love oh. my. I love Ooh. my switchgrass. Is grass. great. Mm -hmm. Done a video on it. Northwind is my favorite, but there's a number of different varieties now that have Shenandoah a very, totem pole. Yes, totem uh, pole gets tall. If you come out here and talk to Bridget, she will talk to you about some switch grasses yes, and will. other grasses. She really knows and loves her grasses. Uh, she's from Nebraska. She yep. knows all them grasses. Out Nebraska. There in the yes. Yep. <laughs> Nebraska. <laughs> but, uh, Nebraska. But yeah, that's why I love here. switch grass. Stays skinny. You know, it blows in the breeze. It comes back every year without a problem. I mean, I'm, I'm just a huge fan of that. I'd say go with that one. And the limbs are not going to scratch the cars as you go up and down. No, it's breezy. It's yeah. airy. It's breezy. It's beautiful. Mm. But it's airy, upright. Breezy, light. Beautiful. It won't let you down. It won't flop. Whimsical. No, it no. doesn't flop all that much. No, real quick, we have never had anybody ask about Rosa Sharon making it through the winter. You think they're going to be okay? Mine's doing yes. great. Oh, yeah. They're 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 I don't think anything deciduous. Hey, speaking of, my crepe myrtle woke up this morning. Mine Whoa, did yeah. Too. Good morning, crepe myrtle. Yes, the first morning I've seen it. So and this cultivar is... I don't know. <laughs> what what I didn't plant it. It was at the house when I got there. I, I think, David, it's probably like a, uh, maybe like a Tonto. It's got that fuchsia. It's a very fuchsia could be a, pink. Could be a Sioux, maybe, could or a, a Choctaw. Yeah. One of those pink cult 
It's pretty old. It's been there for a while. Like I said, it was the only existing plant that I left in the bed whenever I purchased Miami's my home. Miami's another one that comes uh-huh. My but Red it's Rockers a woke yeah, up. it woke up this morning. So everyone was worried about crepe myrtle, yeah. worried uh-huh. about Rosa Sharon, worried about Vitex. All that type of stuff is starting to come. I'll back, say so. uh, on Vitex, my straight species chase tree, both of them are budding out now nice. in my yard. Yeah. Didn't see really any damage beyond just the seeds, you know, the normal seed part dying off. That's normal. And, so, yeah. and whereas uh, Alex Vomitoria, if you eat the foliage, will make you mm. sick to your stomach. If you eat the foliage of a chase tree, mm. okay, well, guess what it does to you? But we'll hello we'll, he- impotence. <laughs> 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 well, but it's not permanent. You know, you yes. just stop eating it. It's all you got to do. So. Chase not, want not. Anyway, uh, and then my hollies are finally budding out, uh-huh. and they you. are severely damaged. They look like they've been through a war. But they are. <laughs> coming out this is the week y'all i mean this is the week where the daytime temps are certainly high but those nighttime temps are staying a little bit warmer that, as well. and that's a really key thing i uh-huh. believe and we've had sunshine for a week so yes. it's really we're turning the corner officially into spring now mm-hmm. uh-huh. I will say I'm still waiting on my camellias. They are very sad looking. Mm. Oh, mine look terrible. <laughs> I don't know if they're coming. I uh, don't feel good about mine either. I don't feel great. Nope. Ugh. Neither do I. All right, sickening. let's stop being sad again. Okay. We'll get on to a next question happy. or another question. Yeah, happy time. Does okay. Carolina Sweetheart Redbud need any shade in our area? And if you're wondering what our area is, we are in Middle Tennessee, so we're a zone seven. And no, not necessarily. Now, can Redbud handle some shade? Certainly they can. They can live kind of on the wood line here most of the time. Down the interstate, you'll see them blooming on the wood line. Uh, they're not like deep, heavy shade lovers on the inside of the forest. Um, and also, no, they don't necessarily need shade at all. They they do best in a full sun all day long type of environment. So uh, that's when what you you'd see them, them growing in. growing in nurseries. They are in a field. Yep. And that field does not. And that field does not have shade. <laughs> no, no shade at all. Pretty much any hardwood deciduous tree will take sun pretty much all day long. Yep. Japanese maples prefer to have a little bit of afternoon protection, but other than that, for the most part, y'all trees want sun. Trees want that sun. Mm-hmm. Do y'all have any shrubs or trees that like swampy areas? Why, sure. yes. I know we, we do. do. Boy, howdy. And what are they? Oh, gosh. There's oh, a number. Oh, goodness. You know, Itea comes to mind. A bunch of grasses come to mind. As Willow. They, they never send you all trees. the parts with those Iteas, though. Yeah, I know. They come, yeah. Not put <laughs> Leaving something out on every one of those kits that you get. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right, but Josh, let the man trees. answer the question. Oh, hey, oh. Well, here's a good one. Hibiscus, perennial hibiscus, yep. loves a swampy spot, really? and they give you blooms the These size of your face. Mm-hmm. Okay. The size of your face. Mm-hmm. What uh. else would you say? What else would you say? Um, Doesn't what about like what about it or wheat. cypress? Oh, oh yeah. bald cypress for sure. What about elysium? Well, they're asking shrubs and trees. Elysium oh, okay. parviflorum gets pretty big. Yeah, yeah. well, that one does. Sorry, you said milkweed before that. So. Willows. Okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely willow. willows. Taxodium, uh, which is the bald cypresses. They're great. River birch, great in that scenario. Dawn redwood, which yeah, is one buddy. of my favorite trees on earth. Oh, mine looks gorgeous right now. And it's they good. are m- growing machines. Yes, fast. Very fast, but they can handle that wet spot just fine. There's a number of things we can use Oh, yeah, for that. bald cypress. I we all got there. excited about that question. Sure uh-huh. did. All right, here's another one about voles. Uh-oh. Ooh. <laughs> How about them Advice voles? Advice yeah. on deterring moles and voles. Do marigolds, daffodils, et cetera, really help? No. no I've not never at all. even heard of that before. <laughs> never. Make the roots stinky and they'll, yeah. <laughs> skid- no, I don't know. No. Um, All right, what's your advice on deterring them, though? Come kitty on. Kitty cat outside. But to say, I don't you don't want to have your kitty cat outside if you don't have yeah. to. I've got a dog that likes to dig yeah, up boy. Moles, moles and maybe voles. I don't, I don't uh, know. There, there are these uh, poison uh, baits that look like, that's B-A-I-T-S, by the <laughs> way, that look like night crawlers that are quite effective. They're not cheap. But they, if you're installed uh, and applied correctly, you can have really good results. But you got to keep putting them in there until they quit showing up. All they have to eat is one, but you may have a bunch of moles. They tend to uh, moles are more, and you'll more need denty. to remove the the carcass as quickly as possible so nothing predates on that and Absolutely. might get poisoned. Well, usually well. if they're dead underground, you I don't know what predates on them under the ground, but. But if you see them on top of the ground, yes. I actually backed over one backing into my driveway last year. He just his timing was really bad. He came out of the ground and I'm backing in. And I'll look at he wasn't there when I back started backing in. When I backed past it, he was dead in front of me. I, it was it was really wild. So that way works. 
It's just, you know, it's a really hit random. Yeah, it's uh, very yeah. random. You'll just have to sit there all the time in your car and wait for them to come out. <laughs> I wonder if a rat trap would work. I mean, uh, the, the box type that they're they put just around not, hotels. They're not up. I don't know, I don't know how you can bait it with a much. night crawler and get them to crawl up well, there. Well, no, that's moles, David. He's, he's oh, voles. Right. Right. Well, yeah, and one of the things that we use for a, a lot of mole is um, – is resisting it is using enlighten which is our expanded yeah. shell if you have uh, particularly if you've got hostas they're really bad about chewing on mm-hmm. hostas they got these very nice fleshy roots that they love to chew on you just do a mulch with those completely or at least in a ring around each of the individual hostas to protect them those little um, uh, expanded shell chips are very sharp and it cuts their paws it is quite effective <laughs> oh, at repulsing cuts them their so. little feet. it does wow well. mm. Okay. Well, we are just about out of time, but as I mentioned, every so often we will get to some of the questions or all the questions. So if you Uh didn't get your question answered on the show, we will answer them in our stories on the at home show page and the Bates Instagram page and Facebook as well. So, so we, we really appreciate everybody tuning in as always. And, uh, keep uh, those questions coming in we're going to do our best to answer them we really appreciate you uh giving us an hour of your time to uh talk about your garden hey it's april 15th y'all get them yep. tomatoes yep, yep. ready to set them out it's tax go day t- tuesday <laughs> it I'm is ready. go time tax day is tuesday <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm already done how about you meh meh <laughs> we'll see <laughs> It's a taxing endeavor, that's for sure. Yes. Absolutely. Hey, folks, it's going to be a beautiful day. Come on out here to uh, Bates Nursery and Garden Center. If you're local, if you're watching us somewhere on the uh, rest of the planet, we appreciate you doing so. Please go out to all the social media sites, share, like, subscribe, do whatever you need to to be sure you know that the At Home Show is coming on because we're going to be here every Saturday. That's, a, that's every, it. Every Saturday at that's 8 it. o'clock. That's what we do. Hey, we're coming to you here from Bates Nursery and the Green Room Studios. We'll see you next Saturday for the At 